picking up once again at Exodus chapter 9, verse 30. But as for you and your servants, I know that you will not fear the Lord God. No, it's Moses knew that the repentance of Pharaoh was <laughs> surface only. He was going to talk, but he wasn't going to walk. Verse 31. And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bald. Actually, uh, that's spelled B-O-L-L-E-D. I think that's how you say it. Notes. The flax and the barley harvest were lost, which no doubt caused great hardship in Egypt. Um, verse 32 but the wheat and the rye were not spitten for they were not grown up notes now this is basically saying that they were not planted the previous two verses tell us that the entire the entirety of the time frame of the ten plagues probably was about three to four months in duration verse 33 and Moses went up out of the city and Pharaoh or from Pharaoh and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord and the thunders and the hail ceased and the rain was poured upon the earth notes uh, Moses and Aaron evidently had some type of shelter over their heads to protect them as they left the palace or else the Lord withheld the hail and ran from them whenever they went which very well could have been the case uh, that would have to be a miracle in itself, considering that these hailstones must have been about 50 pounds each. I mean, they're destroying trees. I mean, I've never seen that happen. I mean, I've never seen a tree get knocked down, but apparently these were not your average hailstones anyways. Verse 34. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, no surprise, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart, he and his servants. Notes, such is the state of many. They repent at the threat of judgment or its actual advent, but when it is lifted, they go back on their word. A very, very sad situation, but it's true, and you don't have to look too far to see it. Verse 35, And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken by Moses. Notes, a few days ago, I was praying for a particular individual asking the Lord to warn them. He spoke to my heart telling me, I am warning them constantly and in many and varied ways, but they will not see to see or listen. That's a quote from Jimmy Swaggart. Chapter 10 And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. Notes, God used the stubbornness of the monarch to reveal his power as shown here in Pharaoh. If a person wills resistance to God, the Lord wills the ability to resist even more. If they will righteousness, God wills more righteousness. Look at cha Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Verse 2, And that you may tell in the ears of your son and of your son's son, the what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them that you may know how that I am the Lord notes God would do such great things in this situation that even the Holy Spirit would constantly speak of this particular time in the centuries that followed the Psalms proclaim this fact all the way through the entire book and I've got quite a list of them Psalms 78 105, 106, uh, 68 verses, uh, chapter 68, verses 6 through 7, chapter 77, verses 14 all the way up to 20, chapter 81, verses 5 through 6, chapter 124, verse 1 through 3, chapters 135, verses 8 and 9, and chapters 136, Verse 10 through 15, there, it's just, there's an endless supply of it, it seems, throughout the entire book. Verse 3, And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourselves before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Notes, and what you heard was my dog, he's over here shaking his collar. And this was the seventh and final time that God would make this demand. 
This verse also presents the great question that God ever asks of the human family. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Uh, that's one of God's biggest questions right there, as a matter of fact. Verse 4. Else if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring locusts into your coast. Notes. The god Serapis was believed by the Egyptians to protect them from the locusts. Uh, this eight plague was more... It's it's a punch in the jaw, you know, more or less, at that belief. As a matter of fact, if you really think about it, all of these miracles are a punch in the jaw to at least one or two Egyptian gods, which are uh, utterly ridiculous, even though their history is fascinating. Verse 5. And they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remains unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which grows for you out of the field. In other, uh, notes. In other words, Egypt, for all practical purpose, would be completely destroyed. Whatever wasn't uh, destroyed in the previous plagues, uh, the crops that are still in the ground apparently are going to take a hit. And notes, that's my heater kicking on because it's freezing over here in Texas, if you can imagine that. Verse 6, And they shall fill your houses and the houses of all your servants and the houses of all Egyptians, which neither your fathers nor your fathers' fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he who was Moses turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. Notes, in other words, Moses didn't even wait for a response from Pharaoh. As a matter of fact, judging by the way that Moses just turned away, it seems to me that Moses is getting a little bit on the T.O.'d side of things. He's getting really, really ticked off because of the absolute stubbornness of this knucklehead monarch. Verse 7, And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord God their God. Do you not know yet that Egypt is destroyed? Uh, notes. This verse proclaims for the first time that Pharaoh's officers intervened and requested Pharaoh to finally give up. Verse 8. And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go serve the Lord your God. But who are they who shall go? Notes, there was no reason for this question, considering that the demand had been very clear in the past. Everyone who pertained to Israel would indeed go. Verse 9, And Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds will we go, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. Notes, Every believer should ask for and claim the salvation of the entirety of his family, absolutely excluding none. We're all part of God's family. We're all, according to the Bible, we're like different body parts that have different functions. And we'll have to pick up in Genesis... Uh, sorry, i got to say Genesis every time. We'll pick up in Exodus chapter 10, verse 10... Oh, maybe I'll get that word Genesis out of my mouth. Thank you.